Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about a neurologic disorder, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis. A myotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a disease of unknown cause in which there is a loss of motor neurons, the nerve cells controlling muscles, in the anterior horns of the spinal cord and the motor nuclei of the lower brain stem. It is often referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease after the famous baseball player who suffered from the disease. As motor neuron cells die, the muscle fibers that they supply undergo atopic changes. Neuronal degeneration may occur in both the upper and lower motor neuron system. Now let's talk about the causes. The leading theory held by researchers is that overexcitation of nerve cells by the neurotransmitter glutamate result in cell injury and neuronal degeneration. Possible causes of ALS include autoimmune diseases, free radical damage, oxidative stress. In 5% to 10% of the case, the cause is transmission of an autosomal dominant trait for familial ALS. That means can pass through generation. Several risk factors have been identified, but the exact cause is still unknown. Now, these are the list of signs and symptoms if you have ALS. First, fatigue. Progressive muscle weakness. Cramps. Twitching. Incoordination. Loss of motor neurons in the anterior horns of the spinal cord result in progressive weakness and atrophy of the muscles of the arm, trunk, and legs. Spasticity usually is present, and a deep tendon stretch reflexes become brisk and overactive. Usually the function of the anal and bladder sphincters remained intact because the spinal Nerves that control muscles of the rectum and ear in the bladder are not affected. Now let's, let's discuss pathophysiology. The basic pathology involves premature death of cells in the stratum of the basal ganglia, the region deep within the brain that is involved in control of movement. Cells also are lost in the cortex, the region of the brain associated with thinking, memory, perception, and judgment. And in the cerebellum, the area that coordinates voluntary muscle activity. Why the protein destroys only certain brain cells is unknown. But several theories have been proposed to explain the phenomenon. One possible theory is that a building block of protein called glutamine abnormally collects in the cell nucleus, causing cell death. Now let's talk about diagnostic tests. ALS is diagnosed on the basis of signs and symptoms because no clinical or laboratory tests are specific for this disease. However, electromyography and muscle biopsy studies of the affected muscles indicate reduction of the number of functioning motor units. Also, an MRI scan can show high signal intensity in the corticospinal tracts. These differentiate ASL or ALS from a multifocal motor neuropathy. Also, neuropsychological testing can assist in assessment and diagnosis. For the medical management, no specific therapy exists for ALS. The main focus of medical and nursing management is on interventions to maintain or improve function, well-being, and quality of life. The average survival time is three to five years with death due most commonly to respiratory insufficiency. Relozole, a glutamate antagonist, is the only medication with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval for treatment of ALS. Baclofen, dantrolene sodium, or diazepam may be useful for patients troubled by spasticity, which cause pain and interferes with self-care. Also, cetriaxin sodium found that it slows the course of disease in the animal, but it has not yet been tested in humans. Now for
for the nursing management, the goals of the patient and the nurse are to maintain function at optimal levels and to enhance the quality of life. Therefore, the patient's physical requirements, which are considerable, are addressed without losing sight of emotional and developmental needs. For teaching patients self-care, the management goals are addressed in special rehabilitation programs or in the patient's home and community. Therefore, the patient and family requires information and instruction about disorder. Its anticipated course and care and management strategies that will optimize the patient's growth and development and physical and psychological status. For continuing care, both the neuromuscular disease and the associated deformities make progress in adolescence and adulthood. Self-help and assistive devices can aid in maintaining maximum independence.